Hello third graders. Today we're going to continue looking at some problems to look at grams and kilograms to find the mass. So we understand grams a little bit better and kilograms a little bit better from our previous lessons and we can now conclude that we use grams to find the mass of lighter things like a scissor, a crown, popcorn, and we use kilograms to find the mass of heavier things, like a person, a football, a car. And what we need to know today is that a thousand grams equals to one kilogram. And also know that kilo means 1,000. So this is a scale that weighs different objects. And we can see that there are grams and kilograms that are used for mass, and you can see that right here on the scale. So let's read the scale and see where the arrow is pointing to. When we look here, we know this is all in the, the bigger red numbers are the kilograms, and in between are the gram numbers. So as we look between zero to one, as we're counting up, we can conclude that this marking is a thousand grams or one kilogram because here's 900 so this would be a thousand grams now let's look at the scale here how by looking at the arrow how many grams are there and how many kilograms is that take a moment Okay, so hopefully you realize that it's 2,000 grams, because if you look right before this large marking, it's 1,900, so 100 more grams would bring us to 2,000 grams, or 2 kilograms. Let's try the next one together. Here's your arrow. How many grams? How many kilograms? Okay, great. So if you look right before that marking, we have 3,900 grams, so 100 more grams would bring us to 4,000 grams or 4 kilograms. Let's try one more. Here's your arrow. It's between 0 and 1. Go for it. Okay, so this one's a little bit more obvious that it's 500 grams, but if we look at kilograms, that is a half of a kilogram because it's between zero and one. We didn't reach the one kilogram yet. Great job. So now when we're weighing something, for example, maybe these five tomatoes here, we can see when we put this on the scale, the arrow goes past the one kilogram mark. So we can see that these tomatoes is more than one kilogram, but less than two kilograms. So when we look between, let's see if we can figure out the actual measurement, the actual mass of these five tomatoes. Okay, so we can measure it in grams, which right here, it tells us it's 1,200 grams. Now think about how you can write this if we do compound units by using both kilograms and grams. Pause the video and see if you can figure this out. Okay, great job. So we have 1,200 grams, which is the same as one kilogram plus 200 grams. To write this mathematically, you would write one kg, 200 g. So it's one kilogram and 200 grams. Let's take a closer look at this by looking at our textbooks from class. So here we have a present, and here's the scale, and then we enlarged it. When you're looking here, we could see from zero all the way to one kilogram, okay? Now, some of you might be confused by this four kilograms. That's if you went all the way around the scale and if it went back to four kilograms. Okay, so right now we're looking at this arrow, which is between zero and one kilogram. Okay, so we didn't pass the one kilogram, so we know we're not going to have a kilogram. Let's take a moment and notice we're past the 500. So what we need to know is to figure out the unknown markings. So when I jump one, two, three, four, five, I can conclude that I am jumping 100. 
So if you go 1, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, 1,000. So when we're looking at that arrow, we're between 600 and 700. So now we need to think about what are these shorter markings worth? Well, if you're going from zero to one, the halfway point would be 50. Yes, you got it. Okay, so let's see if that makes sense. What do you think this is representing? So when I look really closely at that, I can conclude it's between 600 and 700. So this must be 650 grams. The package has a mass of 650 grams. Okay, so now let's look at the grapes and the pumpkin. Let's try this on our own. Again, analyze the scale first. You could see from zero all the way back, it would be, if the needle went all the way here, it would be four kilograms for the total. But the actual arrow is pointing between the 500 and the one kilogram. So we need to figure out our markings. So let's go back to zero. If we're going from zero to 500, we have one, two, three, four, five. So we can conclude that those markings are 100. So see if you can figure out the mass of the grapes. And let's jump to the pumpkin before we pause the video. Same thing with the pumpkin. We have the same scale that if you go all the way around, if the arrow went all the way back to the zero, it would be four kilograms. But the pumpkin stops between the one kilogram and the two kilograms. See if the markings are worth the same. Let's count one, two, three, four, five. Oh, it looks like they're also a hundred. The markings are representing a hundred. Okay, so pause the video. See if you can figure out the mass of the grapes and the mass of the pumpkin. All right, so hopefully you could see that this right here, the arrow is pointing to 800 grams. And we only have grams here. There's no com compound units here because we didn't pass the one kilogram. And right here, the pumpkin, we passed the one kilogram, so we need to take note of that. It's one kilogram and then 100, 200, 300 grams. So the pumpkin is one kilogram and 300 grams. I love this picture with the kitten. I just love his face right here. Let's find the mass of a kitten. And you're going to notice now we're not using a weigh-in scale. We're using a balancing scale. So when we're putting the kitten on one side, they're saying that the kitten's mass is this. Now, when you look at these weights, I see grams and I see a kilogram. So we're going to have a compound unit. We're going to have one kilogram. Can you figure out how many grams there are? Great job. So we have one kilogram, and let's count up, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 grams. So the kitten's mass is one kilogram and 100 grams. Great job today. Let's look at the last two before you work independently. We have butter, and we have lettuce, and we're going back to the weigh-in scale. When we look at the butter, again, we see from zero to one kilogram. I see a lot more markings here. So always check to see what we think the markings are. I'm just going to count from zero to one. So my jumps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we can conclude again that we're going to have each marking represent 100. So you're going to figure out the mass of the butter. We're past the one kilogram, so pay close attention. And then for the lettuce, it's a little bit trickier. So look how I go from here, from zero, and then halfway is one kilogram compared to this scale. This is two kilograms, this is one kilogram. That is telling me my, my uh, markings are representing a different number. So pause the video, see if you can figure out what the markings and the mass will, for the butter will be here, and then figure out the markings for the letter and then the mass for the lettuce. Pause the video to figure this out. Okay, so that means if you unpause the video, you're ready for your answer. We can see that each marking is representing 100. So we the arrow goes past the one kilogram, and then each marking is 100. So you have one kilogram and 200 grams. So that's the mass of all of this butter. 
Now the lettuce is a little bit trickier. So we know we're past the one kilogram, but look, it does not go to two kilograms. But we're really close to that two grams, two, two kilograms. I apologize, I'm stumbling over my words. But, and we have 500 here. So how did we get from here to here to 500? We definitely, these aren't 100. But let's look at the larger markings and see if we jump. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, so the larger markings are 100, and I bet you the smaller markings are 50. Let's just say you guessed 10. Let's count 10 and see if that would work. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. See how 10 won't work? So you do have to jump from what you know to what you know and see if it makes sense. And in this case, 10 doesn't work, 20 doesn't work, but the little ones are 50, and then if you skip it, it's 100. So here you have 500. I'm going to skip 600, 700. So I have one kilogram and 700 grams. Here's another compound unit because I'm combining kilograms and grams. Great job, boys and girls. Today you're going to just try just a few. It's pretty light, but I want you to look at the different weighing scales. You're going to find the mass of the peanuts, the bag of potatoes, um, a bag of flour, and also the mass for the basket of apples here. Take note, the scales are different. You have one kilogram here, but over here you have one kilogram. So really take note of what the unknown markings are and write it in compound units by finding the kilogram and the gram. Okay, so today you will complete workbook page 17. We hope you enjoy this, and um, good luck, third graders.